All right. Welcome to another Small Business Pivots. We have another special guest from around the world. And as I always say, no one can introduce themselves or their business like the business owner. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're at, and your business. Yeah, you bet. I'm Clayton Mass, co-founder and CEO of Keep, K-E-A-P. We are small business automation software for um, businesses generally that are, you know, between 100,000 and 3 million in that range, uh, where they're just trying to get more hours in the day. And uh, we know that automation is the, the great game changer. And that's what we do is we help them automate so they can grow their business and get the growth, profit, and freedom they want. Fantastic. Well, I know a lot about you, but our listeners don't. So how are we going to help our listeners today? Yeah. So, um, you know, I've been doing this for over 20 years. Um, we've been, you know, I've been so fortunate to work with just, you know, hundreds of thousands of small businesses and see what works and what doesn't work. Um, I wrote a book called Conquer the Chaos, the Six Keys to Success for Entrepreneurs. And so we'll talk a little bit about those six keys that I've seen as being crucial in the success and pretty evident when businesses fail that they weren't practicing those keys. We'll, we'll talk briefly about those keys and maybe dig into one or two that'll help people to um, find the success they want. All right, listeners, buckle up. But first, we need to introduce the show. We'll be right back. Welcome to Small Business Pivots, a podcast designed for small business owners. I'm your host, Michael Morrison, a small business coach and founder of Boss, where we make business ownership simplified for success so that you can own a business that runs without you. To learn more, go to businessownershipsimplified.com. All right. Welcome back to Small Business Pivots. Where would you like to start with, Clay? Because I know you've got a lot to share. Yeah, you bet. Well, Michael, thanks for uh, talking with me here. It's been fun just to talk shop a little bit and recognize how time-starved entrepreneurs are and business owners are as they're trying to get the business really going. Um, and so I, you know, I want to just talk a little bit about that. In, in, you know, in the book, Conquer the Chaos, I talk about the dark side of entrepreneurship, which is where the business begins to really uh, envelop the, the business owner, starts to consume them. It, it, it takes way more of the time, energy, creativity that the business owner expected. You know, Business owners usually start their business wanting freedom, and they think, "Hey, this is what we're going to go get." You know, no no cap on my income potential, more time, more flexibility, more impact, the control of what I want to do. You know, this freedom, and yet, what well, we get is chaos. And so, that problem of chaos instead of freedom comes really because of two things. Number one, when it comes to running a small business, the the straight honest truth is there are not enough hours in the day. <laughs> and, yeah, and, nice. and, as, and as long as we don't just, if we don't embrace that reality that there are not enough hours in, in the day, it can really do a number on us mentally, emotionally, psychologically. So we just need to embrace that. We need to recognize there is chaos in small business because there aren't enough hours in the day. That's the first reason. The second reason we can do, we can really do something about. It. And it's that in most small businesses, the, the processes and systems are lacking and they're insufficient to create the smooth growth and scaling of a business. And so when you get right down to it, why do we have chaos and not freedom? Well, there aren't enough hours in the day for small businesses and we don't have adequate systems and processes. So we should probably talk a little bit about that. Wow. Isn't that amazing how there are too many hours in the day when we have a job, <laughs> right? <laughs> but as a business owner, there's not enough hours in the day, but we so really true. have a job. <laughs> yes, right. Instead right. of that freedom that you were talking about. Yeah, you're dead on. Isn't that isn't that the truth? Well said. And and when you start doing, you know, then you start to get a little frustrated because you realize how many hours you're working and you do the math on the and the on the dollars per hour and you think, well crap, I should <laughs> should have stayed in my job. Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> well let me back up just a second because I know I, I, when I'm listening to podcasts, I kind of like to know a little bit about someone's background. So how yeah. did you get into entrepreneurship? Yeah, you bet. Um, you know, I always had, gr growing up, um, dad was a teacher, mom, stay-at-home mom with six kids. And we were always kind of struggling to make things work financially. And when I looked around at friends, neighbors, it seemed like people that were running their own business had something figured out. And, and they were, you know, I was, I, I grew up in a pretty affluent area, but we were always kind of the poor kids on the block. And, and I, 
I looked around at people that were running their own businesses and I was like, I want to do something like that. So I kind of early on, I kind of had this a little bit of fire in me and then just always had a desire to to find ways to earn money. And my parents, you know, are amazing. They kind of taught me that, look, if you want something in this world, go to work and figure out how to how to buy it, figure out how to make the money and then go buy it. And and so I that was kind of my upbringing. And then I, I got into uh, software when I was in graduate school. I, I went, you know, I went through a lot of a lot of schooling, and I knew I didn't really love school, but I felt like I should do that. And then I started to get into software, and then that began to lead me back down the path of entrepreneurship. And in the early days of starting this business, you know, Sharice, my wife, would say, "Why did we go to all that college? And you're doing something that you didn't even need a high school to, to you know, diploma for. You could just <laughs> yeah. you could just do this." And I said, "I don't know. It's just kind of the way it worked out." But she was right. Long story short, I joined up with her two brothers. The three of us started building a software company that helped small businesses do what we were trying to do, which was do sales and marketing and automation in a way that that could free us up some. And we started to invent kind of a, a brand of CRM software, customer relationship management software, that would automate a lot of the workflows and processes and so that's how we got into what we do. I, you know, I could give you much deep, you know, go much deeper down the rabbit hole of the days where we, you know, felt like it was time to quit and we pushed through it, and the days when we started using our software and you know shouted Eureka, and the days where, <laughs> the days where we we started to recognize that this this automation thing was pretty darn cool. But that's the quick background. You know, today we've got hundreds of employees. You know, we we've served hundreds of thousands of small businesses. Um, you know, we, we've, I've, I've raised capital, which, you know, that we could go down that path if we wanted to talk about, but probably most people are probably like, heck no, let's do it on our own. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, right. Cause that's a beast in itself. <laughs> it is. It is. That's a, well, that's a podcast episode for a different day. <laughs> well, the show is called small business pivots. Were there any significant pivots that you could share that maybe small business owners could relate to and maybe yeah. take some of your insights? Yeah. Um, you know, when we, when we pivoted from trading hours for dollars to having a product that we could resell, and then a little bit later to having a a web based you know an online product where we could charge a subscription for, those are those are two pivots that created real efficiency for us. Where where we went from fundamentally exchanging hours for dollars to now having a product that we could resell to then having a product that we could not only resell, but recharge for it each month, you know, turning it into a utility. And that's obviously what SaaS, you know, software as a service is. But in every business, you could make, you could do a version of that. Attorneys can go from um, trading hours for dollars to having packaged services to having an online subscription that they're, that, you know, that their members can access. Accountants can do something similar. Even, you know, mechanics could do something similar. So take going from trading hours for dollars to productizing to charging subscription. I think that journey is one that every service-based small business should be racking their brains on how to navigate. Absolutely. And if, if for those of you that think you may have heard keep before you have it's in your google searches from time to time <laughs> so we're talking That's to we're talking to a, a master here the goat if you will of small business automation and things so let's talk about the automation because a lot of business owners, they think, oh, that's just one more thing to learn. I can barely keep up with my own industry. So can you yeah. kind of share a little bit about the automation process? Yeah. Let, and let me let me start with a little spoiler alert. And this might sound odd coming from a software company CEO. It's not about the software. <laughs> yeah, there's, right. there's lots of automation platforms out there and there's lots of ways to do automation. And you're exactly right. Most small business owners don't have the time to go figure that out, or even a lot of times don't have a team member that can go figure it out. So we say all the time, look, it's about the, the success in automating comes from software strategy and services. And when you get a software platform, you've got to make sure that you're getting a strategy that goes along with it of how you implement it. And you have to be participative in that. You you you, you got to be a participant. You can't just say, oh, I bought this piece of software, go do this. Well, you know, that's that's like saying I hired a robot, go do this. Well, do what? Do, like, how do you want it to do? What right. What do you want done? And so the strategy is really important. And it really, the key that brings it all together is having services 
that can help you as a small business understand what you're trying to do, how you want to do it, and then get that done. So software plus strategy plus services, let me just kind of put people's minds at rest if they're like, I got to go figure this out. No, you don't. You just got to work with somebody who can bring the package together and create a solution of software strategy and service that will deliver the success. So having, having said that, if you stop and think about the problem, it's really as simple as this. You know, I said I said insufficient products and and, and or, uh, processes and systems. I'm going to make it really simple. Most small businesses, and I mean this with all the love and admiration and and support that I could possibly lend. Most small businesses are a leaky bucket, and there's money and time that's just draining out of the bucket every day. And it it happens in the forms of in the form of broken systems and processes, and so stop and think about it. You spend some money on an ad on on advertising to drive leads, and some of those leads go to your website, and some get captured, and some fall by the wayside, and some fill out a form, and some don't ever do that, and some who fill out the form show up on the on the discovery call or you know whatever that next step is. But all the all at each step. From the process of spending money to generate a lead and turn it into a customer, there are leaks in the system. And that's just in the marketing system. Then you go through in sales and you go through in service, post-sale, and then you go through the business operations. And what you find over and over in small businesses, and again, I love them like my children, they they have leaks in them. And unfortunately, it's really hard to grow a business when you've got a leaky bucket. Bucket. And the, the inclination is just to put more, pour more money in the top. All the while, the business owner knows, A, it's coming out of their pocket, and B, they're not getting the return on the investment that they want. And, and, and so if you just simplify down the whole point of automation, it's to look at that leaky bucket and plug automations into those holes. Very well said. Yeah, because I do see a lot of business owners – I almost said spending time, but it's more wasting time trying to find that perfect automation, which one can do all these things. And then Mm -hmm. it does so many things they buy it and then they don't do anything with it because there's too much to learn. (laughs) Like it doesn't, it doesn't just work like what you said. (laughs) Right. Right. And, and that's why, you know, you need a little guidance that goes along with it. You need a little service. You need to get clear on the strategy um, because otherwise you're, you're kind of reaching for something, but you, you know you've got leaks and you know that automations can plug it, but you you need a you need a map, you need a guide on how to do that. And and what we do with with our with our customers is we help them kind of map out the process to, to identify, well, where are the leaks? Okay, where where are the big and we'll start with the biggest ones. And and most of the time, not always, but most of the time, the most painful, obvious, biggest leaks are in marketing. Because you're spending money there. It's not getting the yield that you want. But then you you know you plug those leaks and then all of a sudden they start you know it, it starts leaking out on the sales side because you're 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 not handling the leads effectively they're not converting the, the right way you know and business owners will dig in and they're just aghast you know they're just like how are we wasting this what are we doing yeah. you know how much money we spent on this to get these and now you're just cherry picking the best ones and throwing away the ones that don't you know that kind of thing happens and then you close them and you realize oh my gosh if we would onboard and serve and fulfill on this, on you know what we've sold more effectively, then the reviews, the referrals, the repeat business can happen very naturally. I, I always call those the three hours of profit. People say there's one hour in profit, and no, there's three reviews, referrals, repeat business. That's where all the profit is in small business. And if you don't onboard and serve those cl- your, your customers effectively, you miss on all that profit. Those reviews and referrals and repeat business. So. You know, and then you do that and you go, okay, well, internally, we've got internal workflows and processes that are breaking down and handoffs are being missed between employees and stuff's getting dropped and things are, you know, customers are slipping through the cracks and deadlines are falling by the wayside. And you realize, oh, well, we got to plug that. So mapping out the business is the most unsexy, least exciting thing for business owners to do. And it's actually where you identify the holes and the leaks in the system so that you can plug them. And because most people will put that off and put that off and put that off, it's really good to work with someone who can say, let's let's get this clear for you. Let's get the strategy right. Let's lay out your business map pro- or business process, map it out, identify where the holes are, and then plug automations. And you know, the awesome thing about automations is you 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 just 
keep doing more and more and more. Like like my co-founder says, once you get hooked on automation, you you can't stop. It's oh, it's amazing. Amen. <clears throat> amen. <laughs> You're listening to Small Business Pivots. This episode is proudly brought to you by Boss, where business ownership is simplified for success. At Boss, we help business owners create their businesses to run smoothly without them being there 24-7. Our seasoned business coaches who have walked the path themselves provide invaluable guidance and support. And with additional services like fast business loans, some approved within 24 to 48 hours, comprehensive online courses, detailed workbooks, and engaging classes, Boss offers a wealth of resources to help you succeed. Discover how small business success begins with Boss at businessownershipsimplified.com. If you're enjoying the podcast, make sure to stay connected by hitting that subscribe button, giving us a thumbs up, or leaving a positive review. Your support keeps us going. Now let's get back to our incredible guest. Well, for those business owners that's wondering, do I fall in that bucket? I will say this because I'm a business coach. So I work with a lot of business owners yeah. for those that keep pouring more money into sales. If you have a stack of business cards from networking events that you've gone to and you haven't done anything with those, we're talking to you because you <laughs> yes. might have sales in front of you, but you haven't set up any kind of system to right. capture possible sales. And I see That's that with right. business owners, they just keep pouring more money, more time into all these 10 X increase your sales in 90 days, but right. you have sales in front of you everywhere. I promise business owners on That's your right. desk, in your drawers, in your car, in your glove compartment, wherever. So what would someone start with, with heap? How would, yeah, how so would you help them discover that? Yeah, what we do is um, we take them through a, a process and we give them a growth playbook, which in essence is about identifying these leaks in the bucket, you know, identifies the leaks in the bucket and starts with the top three most important ones to address. And and they can, by the way, they can get this, uh, this playbook um, for free and they can do it, um, get a session to kind of help guide them through it. And then they can implement it themselves. They can go find somebody else to, to do that with or they can work with us to do it. But they can go to keep.com slash playbook, keap.com slash playbook, and they'll, you can kind of see the, the process there and sign up to, to get a, a session and get your playbook. And, and the great thing once you have your playbook is you can, you can do it over time. You can do it you know, yourself. You can go get a, a different automation platform to help you do it. You know, I would just say whatever you do, get, don't just get the software thinking you're going to do it yourself get the software, a little bit of strategy to go along with it and some services so that you can get it implemented. Because when you implement it properly, like with that combination, the ROI is through the roof. When you just buy a piece of software, the the stats are alarmingly unpleasant um, for how often it doesn't work. And and again, people will naturally say, well, that's the software, you know, it's the software's fault. No, it's like, if anything, it's the software company and software industry's fault for not helping people understand you need more than just a piece of software to throw at the problem. You've got to have the software, the strategy, and the services to get to success. So on the sales and marketing automation, let's start there. What does yeah. the process look like with a software like Keep? Because I know a lot of them are either intimidated, they don't have time, they just, or uh, I will, I'll back up a little, they just don't understand it because they've never used automation before. So can you yeah. explain how that works and how yeah, beneficial it is? You bet. Um, super common scenario is you are collecting a lead and you need to effectively follow up with that lead and nurture it to convert it in the next step of the sales process. So, um, You've got to, so how do you do that? Well, you use you use software like ours to put a form on your website that when someone and the whole point is to have a lead magnet that attracts your ideal prospect and will and that ideal prospect will give you their contact information in exchange for the value that you're giving. So what's that lead magnet? That lead magnet could be a white paper, it could be uh, you know, a buyer's guide. It could be, uh, you know, of what to avoid when you're doing this. It could be a webinar. It could be a free one-on-one -on -one consult. You know, it can be any number of free samples or whatever it is, but you're, you're using that to attract the people that 
your you know your ideal customers and so now you you so you use software like ours to create a form that when filled out delivers the thing that the that the prospect wanted also stores all of the prospects information in the software and tracks everything that that person does whether they click or open or you know, all their behaviors so that you now know okay this person filled out this form they have this interest they 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 want to move forward with us or not and there's automated follow-ups that are happening by text or email or phone calls that you can intersperse in there and all of it is designed to move the prospect from point a to point b and point b is not you know done deal closed the customer moved on you know it's it's a dating process as we all know and most people on this call didn't ask their spouse to marry them after the first date right there's a pro right. there's a nurturing process there's a dating process and so you're moving them from point a to point b and in most biz most small businesses there's really usually one or two um checkpoints in between a new lead and that person signing up for the product or service so we design that, get really clear on that that customer journey, as it's often called, and we say, okay, well, now let's automate that so that you don't have a prospect that's waiting for something on your side because that's where thing that's where the leaks happen when there's something we have to do on the small business side, but we're busy taking care of clients or um, you know putting out a fire or showing up at our child's soccer game that we promised or you know, whatever that is. We need the we need the prospect to keep going through an automated journey, and so. The way I like to visualize and create a visual for people is if you've ever been in an air airport and gone to, a, you know, seen the moving sidewalks that, or, you know, the moving, well, you want to put your prospect on that, mo that moving conveyor belt that just keeps them going while you're running your business and taking care of other things. And that's what automation will do for you is it'll move them from step to step to step. And at certain points, there's human intervention, but, but, but your automation system is notifying you of when it's time to engage as you know, as a human, and it's taking care of all, you know, it's, it's essentially the moving sidewalk in the background. Being very well educated in this space, what would you say, because I know there's a lot of options out there for a CRM, what, what would you say is something that a business owner should be looking for to start with, since there are so many options? First one we already, we already covered, which is software, the strategy, the service. Um, kind of a click down on that with the strategy you want to start you want you want to uh, work with a platform that has um, a starting point for you some templates some pre-built things so that you're not recreating the wheel and you know doing everything from scratch as much as we all like to believe our business is special unique and different <laughs> it's pretty darn similar to, to some others that are out there that have already yep. you know gone down this path and so we want to learn from them we want to just do what other successful people have been doing and use automations that are proven to plug the holes in a business. So that's the second, you know, first one, software strategy service. The second one is proven automations that you can start with where you're not, you know, building it from scratch. Um, the third thing I would say is really finding this, finding a vendor, an, a, a, an automation platform that is right sized for your business. And this one is really, <laughs> this one is really difficult for people to identify because unfortunately a lot of software vendors will say we do this for everybody oh we do it for small businesses and medium-sized businesses and enterprises yeah. and then they'll say oh we do it for small businesses and you find out what they really mean is 50 person companies not five person companies or what they really mean is 20 person companies not one person companies so you got to be pretty clear about the vendor and who you're working with and we serve small businesses. Our customers are generally two to 25 employees. If they're a solopreneur, they're not a good fit unless they're just about to break out. You know, they've passed the six figure mark. They're, they really have got like, they got a job that's really starting to stretch them and push them and they're ready to move, to go to the next level. Then that solopreneur can work with, can, can work with us. But 90% of the, of the small business market, as you know, is solopreneurs. Yeah. And we're very clear, we're not for the newbie. We're not for the beginner. And, you know, we we want them to be successful. By the way, we tried to go down that path, didn't work well for us. And we said, you know what, that's just not who we are. Auto, our automation platform is for small businesses that they've got a lot going on and things are starting to slip through the cracks. And that's where that's where we really shine is that two to 25 employees, when they start with us, they can grow with us up to 100. But um, 
unfortunately, a lot of small, a lot of CRM vendors and automation vendors out there, they'll say, you know, that we can serve anybody. And when you get into it, you realize, oh, whoa, 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 hold on. Salesforce is not for us. HubSpot is yeah. not for this small, this kind of small business. It's a much bigger small business. And, um, you know, if you if you don't do that, the cost and complexity get out of control really fast. Absolutely. And for business owners, a lot of those softwares, well, you didn't mention them, but they charge per module or per whatever mm -hmm. you want. And yeah. I had a business owner, solopreneur, wanting to grow, spending almost 400 bucks a month on a CRM yeah. <laughs> because yeah. they thought the more they invested in those modules, the more it could do. But what I, they found out was I don't need all that, but they didn't yeah. realize that until they brought it to my attention, brought their financials to me. And I said, whoa, whoa what do you, you only make X annual revenue and you're spending this much. Yeah. Is it increasing sales? No, I can't even figure it out. Yeah. So it's okay to call it quits and go find something that's more yeah. comparable to your. So I'm glad okay. you brought that up because that's yeah. something a lot of us don't think about. Yeah, and I see it all the time and I, I hate it because the definition of small business is so broad. Yeah. That people think, oh, it's small business, and it's like, well, hold on. I, you know, I, I talk a lot about the stages of small business success and how they change on the ones and threes of revenue. You know, a uh, hundred thousand to three hundred thousand to a million to three million to ten million to thirty million. It's a, it's an amazing thing. I've studied this for years and years and years, and the people, process, products need to get adjusted at each stage change. If they don't, you get plateaued at one of these stages. Yeah, and yet. In small business, a lot of times it's just all talked about as the same thing. So I'll give people a good rule of thumb. Generally speaking, your autom your CRM automation platform is about one to two percent of your total annual revenues. And you know I've looked at it six ways a Sunday. It's just the way it is. I, I you know sometimes you're on the higher end because you're really starting to grow, and so it looks more like two percent. Sometimes you might only be 0.75% because you've really maxed out your systems and you're doing all, you're getting really good yield on it. And there's an upgrade that needs to be done pretty soon. <laughs> it's, just, yeah. it's just that kind of thing. And people don't like to think of it that way. But if you stop and think about in a retail space to transact your sales with a credit card, you're spending a couple percent. It's just kind of the cost of sales. And it's it's a it's a part of doing business that if people will kind of use that as a rule of thumb, they won't get too far off the field one way or the other. I know for a lot of business owners, they're stuck because they can't think of how they're going to get ahead, if that makes sense. So they're kind of mm -hmm. stuck in that roller coaster of, I don't have time to do one more thing. Take yep. yourself back to when you were there, when you were trying to develop this software, move forward. What were some of the things that you found time other than just creating systems and processes? Because uh, there's also a mindset involved yeah. with that. Can you explain or give some insight on that? Yeah, you, you bet. Um, I'm, I'll share two principles that I think will get people in the right um, mindset to really start to attack this. And it's really fun once you start doing it. The first principle is um, uh, what what is manual and repetitive can be automated. So, so what you what you want to do is notice, okay, well, where are we doing things over and over and over? And one of the easiest ways is to go look at your out, you know, your sent mail and just see what messages you're sending that are almost the exact same thing going to different people. And you're writing this thing over and over and over. Well, that that can be automated. Any process where you're doing it over and over and over, um, or your people are doing it over and over and over. Well, that you know, if it's manual and repetitive, it can it can be automated. So that's the first principle. The second principle is that automation is to your time what compound interest is to your money mm. um so so what that means is if we can just get a little bit of automation working for us now now that starts to produce something that can we've got more capacity to do more and more and more so just like that you know the the, the math of compound interest enables enables you to pay down debt in smart ways if you use that principle or to build up savings in smart ways if you use that principle. Well, automation is the same thing with our time. So what we want to do is just like a smart investor would free up a little cash and then go, well, let me put this into an investment where I can apply the law of compound interest and it'll start growing for me. You want to do the same thing when you free up a little bit of time. You, you identify 
a re manual repetitive task that you can you can put into a system or automate it and now that frees up a little bit of time now what do you do with that time well you don't go spend it and throw it away you, you reinvest it into some more automation so that it creates more and more time and each time you do that you can start you know you start doing little processes and it's like oh wow this process takes you know seven minutes but we do it six times a day and now we automate that and we just saved 42 minutes you know and, and then well this one we just saved an hour this way and it's really fun when this is where i said you start to get addicted to it because you can start to just put you can you can buy back your time you can start to create hours in the day and that is the most precious commodity for small businesses absolutely and every time i think that everyone has heard of a calendar scheduler I meet a business owner that hasn't. So yes. if you're not using anything at all, what you're talking about, go find a calendar scheduler. Calendly is, is what we've used in the past. It's, that's all it does. But to get that momentum going, I remember the first time that I found automation, exactly what you said. I was like, let's go find some more. Like, that <laughs> yeah. is really cool. Right. Uh, so that you're, you're spot on. I think that's a great way to look at it. Well, great. Yep. There's all all sorts of ways to look at the repetitive manual things that we do, and we just get stuck doing them, and we don't realize, oh my gosh, there's a there's a better way to do this. Absolutely. So, what is the best way for people to follow you, find you? Yeah, you bet. Um, you know, they can follow me uh, at claytmask.com. They can follow me uh, just kind of on social, claytmask. But probably the best way is to go to keep.com um, and really keep.com slash playbook if they want to learn more about what we do. That's that's where we really help people through this process of, of you know, going through the leaky bucket, plugging the holes and buying back their time so that they can get the kind of growth, profit and freedom they want. Fantastic. Well, I always end with a question of if you were in a room of small business owners of all levels of business, What's something applicable that you could tell all of them that would be relatable? Yes. I would say there is, every small business could increase their sales by 2 to 3x with proper follow-up. What that's a what I just said was really the simple way of saying what our software does. It's an automated follow-up system and what happens in most businesses is there's not enough time, the systems aren't there. And so follow-up breaks down. And it's the most simple and basic thing in the world that when you send more follow-up, you make more sales. And so if you just, it, even if it's bad follow-up, by the way, <laughs> yeah, just, right. just more follow-up makes more sales. It is because newsflash, they didn't get your first message. <laughs> right, right. And you've got to keep sending. You got to keep sharing the message. And so most people are dramatically under- estimating the amount of follow-up that's needed and they can you know we've watched it over and over and over and over with our customers there's not a small business on the planet that cannot double or triple their sales with proper follow-up i know it's a provocative thing to say but i've done this for over two decades i've watched it over and over and over and um i stand by it i i, I say all the time you know when when i die and you know people look at my tombstone i wanted to say you know clay mask great husband great father Follow up works. <laughs> yeah, that, that's awesome. I want to. I want to enhance that because we just had a client. I don't know if it's a. I'll take it as a compliment review. I I asked them and and they made a very large purchase. And I said, "What made you consider using Boss for this particular product?" And they said, "You were the only one that called me back." Mm -hmm. Perfect example. Yep. Follow yep. up works. And they and they reached out to six different vendors and we were the only one that called them back. So that's powerful and, right there. And if people don't do any plugging of the holes except for automating their follow up in the lead conversion process and the post purchase process, if they just do those two things, they will grow their business substantially. It will it will it will propel the business forward while the business owners you know, doing all the things they got to do to 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 manage the issues. Um, but unfortunately, what happens is everybody knows they should be following up, they should be doing these things, and there aren't enough hours in the day, and the systems are inadequate, and the follow-up doesn't happen, and the business struggles to grow. Solid advice. Well, Clayt, you've been a blessing to many and a wealth of knowledge today. Thank you so much for your time. 
Thanks, Michael. Great to be with you. Love what you guys do at Boss and glad to be uh, on the episode today. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to Small Business Pivots. Please don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. If your business is stuck, you need help creating a business that can run without you, or you need a fast business loan or line of credit, go to our website, businessownershipsimplified.com and schedule a free consultation to learn why small business success starts with Boss. If you want to talk anything small business related, email me at michael at michaeldmorrison.com. We'll see you next time on Small Business Pivots.